start again and alfalfa is about where it needs to be. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of fencing. Cattle tend to become accustomed to intensive grazing rather easily and are moved, moved about easily. Uh, five, minimum of five paddocks is probably uh, what it would take for you to get by. We uh, sometimes use six or seven paddocks so that when the cattle make a complete rotation, they're back to where the uh, alfalfa is in the ideal uh, stage to be, to be grazed. This is commercial mineral mix which we use and uh, we try to keep that before them at all times and this is what we would mix bloat guard in with it before we turn them in two there and let them, let them get their consumption of bloat guard generally say three days prior to grazing the alfalfa. You just seldom see a bloat case on alfalfa. So I think if you use good management techniques like the university recommends, uh, fill those cattle up on hay when you put them in there, maybe scatter a little hay in that alfalfa field the first time. Uh, they'll fill up on it, they won't gorge on the alfalfa. Uh, we like for our cattle to eat the entire plant. We try to have enough cattle in a small area that they'll eat it all the way to the ground so they get the stem as well as the leafy area. Uh, we try not to put them in on cloudy, rainy days if they're not already there. Uh, we don't introduce them that way into lush alfalfa. And uh, we just haven't had a problem. Bloat is a potential in animals grazing alfalfa. No management practice can ensure that bloat will never occur. However, its likelihood can be decreased so much grazing alfalfa can become common. The following suggestions can reduce the risk of cattle bloat. Grow grass with alfalfa. Feed bloat preventing compounds. Do not turn hungry cattle into an alfalfa field, especially when plants are wet from dew. Do not graze immature alfalfa or alfalfa grass. Provide salt and mineral. Observe cattle closely when turning in for the first time. Observe cattle closely during cool, cloudy, rainy weather for signs of bloat. If they do uh, graze uh, under good conditions, they may graze uh, at a rate of uh, five to six percent of their live weight per hour in terms of herbage dry matter, which is capable of producing live weight gains uh, anywhere from two to three or even higher pounds of average daily gain. If you look around at our county, we're a pretty rolling county, and, and uh, livestock is where we're going to make our money in the future. Uh, when you can come up with a grazing crop that can provide what alfalfa can, it's hard to ignore. So I see a real potential for us. A lot of our dairy farms are 50 cow herds, and they can utilize the alfalfa plant in grazing to cut back on, on their cost, and thus their income over feed cost tend to be higher. For a beef cattle producer, rather than running maybe one steer per acre, he can run two or two and a half steers per acre. Or he can run a mama cow and a calf on that acre very easily. And most time even have alfalfa left over to feed her through the winter time. To give you an accurate figure, my income uh, over feed cost figure in summer on alfalfa grazing will go up a dollar and a half to do two dollars higher than it does in the winter time on the feed we put up and feed. So it's, it's been paying, paying probably. Paying off big. Alfalfa, the queen of the forage crops, has demonstrated through research and many on-farm demonstrations that it is a versatile, high-yielding, high-quality, adapted forage legume. Its role as a major hay plant will continue, but its role as an important pasture plant has been virtually untapped. For more information about alfalfa as a crop, and specifically about alfalfa for grazing, Stop by your county extension office and pick up a copy of Grazing Alfalfa ID 97. We also invite you to participate in the annual Kentucky Alfalfa Conference.